Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you had a good Veterans Day weekend. Where are all your corporate friends? <laughs> Releasing statements. Okay. They're busy making money. Um, I wanted to give an update, though, because it's been almost a week now since we uh, rolled out CT 2030. Uh, you remember last week I was there standing next to labor and standing next to business. They were there shoulder to shoulder, side by side. That doesn't always happen in this state. Saying how incredibly important it is that we speed up our transportation system going forward. And in the ensuing uh, week, I've gotten a lot of feedback from uh, folks, uh, positive feedback, positive feedback from the business community in terms of, um, you know, having them, on, come on in. <laughs> having them, uh, you know, come on board, having them say what it takes for them to grow and expand and invest in this state. Why transportation and CT 2030 is so incredibly important for them. And uh, this is a relationship I'm growing and expanding with the business community. So today we just wanted to announce that uh, we have um, a number of business leaders who have come forward loud and clear endorsing our 2030 uh, plan. Down in Danbury, Beringer Ingelheim. Um, a little further up the Merritt, you've got uh, Amphenol and Adam Norwood. Uh, as you know, we've got Stanley Black & Decker in New Britain gave us a very strong comment. Here we are in the insurance capital of America in Hartford. And uh, the major insurance players have all come forward and said why this plan works why it's key to them staying in the state of Connecticut, expanding in the state of Connecticut, what it means. A little later on uh, today, you're going to hear from um, uh, Pratt and Whitney, why they think this is so important. Uh, and this is why it's key that I get this building to step up and make a tough choice to get this state moving again with the business community lined up as they are uh, behind this effort right now. It's a quality of life issue. That's what every one of them says. It can save me 20 minutes driving from uh, Haddam to Hartford. It can save me a half an hour taking the train from uh, New Haven to New York and what that means. Bridgeport, 20 minutes faster uh, to drive down to New Haven. What that 20 minutes means by getting rid of that choke point and doing this in a responsible way. The business guys have all told me what it means to be able to get their customers able to their office and make it a little easier for that um, that worker to be able to get there, maybe stop uh, his or her kid off on their way um, to the office and still get there on time. For them, it's a really important quality of life issue. And finally, they want to do it in a fiscally responsible way. I think you've heard, um, you know, next to transportation, they said, get your fiscal house in order. And they don't want us playing any games in terms of how we finance this. They don't want us borrowing from the general fund to put money into the special transportation fund, creating a hole over there to fill a hole over here, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Uh, I'm getting strong feedback that they think we have a responsible way to pay for this, a responsible way to get this state growing again. And um, I'm looking forward to working with our friends in business and labor and the folks in this building so you can keep this moving forward and make a decision that's so key to the economic future of this state. So I'm going to try and give a little update uh, every you know, week or so as we uh, go around the state saying why, what we're accomplishing, what feedback I'm hearing, and what we got to do going forward to get this state moving again. And this is one of the most important things I've heard from a lot of our friends in labor and now the business community as well. In addition to the broad endorsements, does your office have a strategy in which you divide it up the names of legislators who might be persuaded by certain CEOs? Yes. And have those calls begun? No. Um, I don't think so, but, but we're um, we're rolling this out right now. I'm just, I'm just scrolling through the, the, the statements as I get them from CEO representatives, and nobody's saying they endorse the way you're paying for this. Nobody's saying we think what you told us gets you this address. They're all saying, yeah, we want a better transportation system. Well, they like mom and apple pie, too. Who's not going to say Give them a call. They think we have a responsible way to pay for this. Um, call Jim Lurie and see what he said about a responsible financing plan. Nobody wants to borrow more. Nobody wants to, um, you know, play other games. They want to fix this once and for all. But, but how, how does that give you a strategy for getting 18 votes in the Senate? How does having um, business and labor standing side by side saying this is key to the economic future of this state, how does that convince some people in this state, in this uh, building? Um, I'm going to work them day in and day out uh, because it's the most important thing we can do to get the state moving again. Governor, I was on the phone with Senator Lurie um, yesterday, and he said that, you know, 
if there is potential for not doing the tolls and for getting revenue from legalizing marijuana or legalizing sports betting and gambling, would you be willing to consider that? I don't think the Trump administration would be willing to consider that when it comes to uh, you know, bonding for the TIFIA bonds, the very low cost financing, you know. They want a independent, reliable revenue stream. And nobody knows what marijuana does. Nobody knows what sports betting does. That does not meet their requirements when it comes to uh, paying for this. No one's ever said that those two things would raise the government revenue. I think that's a fair point. Do you think there's a lot of confusion with that or that maybe the general public doesn't understand? And are you saying that without this reliable revenue stream, federal money uh, is contingent upon, and, but it could be anything, but you're saying the tolls are the best way to accomplish it. Uh, I'm saying that um, they want an independent, reliable revenue stream, so sports betting does not meet their needs. Um, you know, somebody else said, mentioned the lottery. Well, frankly, the lottery right now is folks on both sides of the aisle during the campaign said um, we ought to use this to shore up our uh, pension fund, and that's just what we've done uh, you, with the lottery revenues. You've also tried to have a good relationship pretty much with the business community because that's where you come from, and they've been in and out of your administration uh, on certain issues. Have they expressed any concerns about your plan at all? Are there things that they uh, had questions uh, about uh, to accomplish? I mean, granted, they're going to benefit from transportation. We all would. Uh, but as far as paying for it and other things, was there any kind of discussion that you no, I, um, how we pay for it, um, they want it done on a credible way that works for the long term and not, uh, no, no more gamesmanship. That's, that, that's for clear. Uh, but I think they're very supportive of what we got to do. Look, as I, as I ran for office, I repeated over and over again the three mantras the business community said. Keep your fiscal house in order, speed up the rail and the road system, and workforce development. Those are the three priorities I've had, and that's the three priorities I heard from the business leaders. Governor, Governor you, you said the business executives are kind of calling um, state senators. Well, some of them may not live in the district, but the people who do live in that district may not want to call it. So what makes you think a politician who relies on, on votes to remain in office all seem to want to remain in office is going to be persuaded by the, some CEO when you know when they go out to the public and, and they can hear from because their own two years ago everybody was saying uh, there goes GE woe was us last one out turn out the lights I think every mayor and every legislator heard that you all heard that we've got a very different tone in this state right now you've got business leaders stepping up saying um, I want to be constructive these are the things that I can support to give me an incentive to stay and grow and expand and hire in your state. So I'd like to think that legislators will listen to that. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do to to bring along their voters? I mean, it's great you have you have these uh, important CEOs. No doubt they, they their businesses are important to the district and to the state at large. But what about the public? How how are you going to bring the public along? The public wants good paying jobs. They want their kids to be able to stay in the state and have an opportunity and a good job uh, close to home. And when you have business leaders saying, this is key to my growing and expanding in the state of Connecticut, fix your transportation system in a fiscally responsible way, I think people listen to that. How many, how many, how many, people, have, how many people have changed their minds? In other words, you rolled out this plan on Thursday. It was kind of known before then. Uh, you pick a time frame. How many people have changed their mind? In other words, publicly, Republicans, no Republican has stood up at a podium like that and says, I changed my mind. Uh, how many people have changed their mind since you rolled out the new plan? It's not easy. I think uh, a lot of folks would just as soon um, kick the can, defer this, wait a little longer, you know, sort of the old uh, Connecticut playbook. And uh, I'm pushing hard, and I'm pushing hard with friends in labor and friends in business saying it's the most important thing we need to do to get this state moving again. And we can't afford to wait. I mean, the special transportation fund goes underwater in uh, less than five years. Now is the time for us to step up and do the right thing. Governor, it would appear that Republicans who want an alternate funding source for tolls want to try and hatch a plan that would shift funds from one revenue stream into the special transportation fund. Don't know exactly what that looks like, but are you open to reprioritizing where funds go? 
Well, you're, you're, so you're taking money from education, you're taking money from municipal aid, and moving that from the general fund over to the special transportation fund, that's going to be the strategy? Governor, the, um, uh, Sal Luciano has said at your news conference last week that he's got these shortages from your administration with these project labor agreements. Uh, 2012 legislation and law says do a project by project basis, and we don't know what those projects are yet. Uh, also, associated building contractors were complaining, saying it blocks out non union um, companies. Can you comment on that? Here's what here's what a project labor agreement means to me. It means there's a condition you hire a certain number of folks locally. It says there's a condition that there are apprenticeship programs, some more people in Connecticut can get the skills they need going forward. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that these are good paying Connecticut jobs. And the PLA helps me do that. Governor, how contentious this is in some of the your office has told us that only 10% of this plan is full. If you can do 90% of the plan, why can't you do the whole thing with us? Well, I think you know as well as anybody that um, the transportation fund is going bankrupt. We borrowed ourselves and borrowed ourselves and borrowed itself. But just stop one second, Mark. In the last, in the last budget cycle from the, from the new cards of credit tax. No, that's a falsehood you keep repeating, by the way. 100% of that car tax, um, sales tax, is going into the special transportation fund. It's going in over four years, but we have kept faith with that. And, uh, and I mean to keep faith with the people of the state of Connecticut. By the way, I also put money back into the uh, Green Bank, money they had siphoned out. I also put money back into the Energy Efficiency Fund people had siphoned well, out. I'm trying, but just let me finish. I'm trying to keep faith with the uh, people of Connecticut and when it comes to the car tax, 100% of that money is going back into the special transportation fund over the next four years. Governor, for community members who are watching live right now, for transparency purposes, are there any corporate tax rates incentives for these big businesses who now come up say they're supporting you in this plan? No. On the, on the specific, um, as Mark asked before, uh, a lot of these CEOs, they said, hey, we like the transportation plan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Seem they tried to wiggle away and didn't come out and say, "Hey, we love tolls." So I, I think what Mark was trying to ask you was: is is are, are the CEOs not completely on board with the tolls, although they want the transportation improvements, or do you not interpret it that way? They want a responsible, independent revenue stream that pays for this, and they think that our CT twenty thirty plan provides the best option out there to do it on a responsible way. Why aren't they here? We see today. If you're here to. All the press conference to talk about that this is a support, but yet they're not here to answer questions. I hope they're investing in the state of Connecticut, hiring people, and making a profit. That's what they do. <laughs> Governor, I'm sorry if this was asked, I came in late, but I'm still hearing from some urban Democrats that they're really worried about some of the poorest citizens that this will result in you know hundreds of dollars a year that they can't afford. Um, if it would get you a compromise and take out some votes, Um, the answer to that is yes, uh, as long as the numbers add up, something I have to keep reminding people in this building. But if, um, this is the best hope to bring our cities back to life, Keith. I mean, we turn our cities back into urban hubs with transit-oriented development. People don't need cars necessarily to be able to get to work any longer. Our cities come to life. Millennials want to stay and um, live in a, a vibrant city. This is really key to an urban strategy. How close are you to getting the votes? I mean, you must be you're following this every single day, uh, closer than any of us. I think How everybody's taking a second look. And, uh, and to be blunt, I'm really um, I'm thankful that the Senate Republicans gave me a chance to make my case there last week. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. But they're taking a second hard look at it. And I think if they have an alternative, now's the time to come forward. What's your strategy for getting input directly from the voters? I mean, you said you got input from the business community. Do you plan on holding town halls? Or I think so. I think I should do some uh, town meetings uh, just to make my case, look people in the eye, and say why this is absolutely key from a quality of life point of view and a job point of view for the future of the state. When, Absolutely. When, when do you plan to do that? I think I ought to do it uh, pretty soon, don't you think, if we're going to get this special session going. 
Well, so so is that already in the works, or did you just come off? The, did that just come off the cuff? A, it's already in the works. B, as you know, I've done a lot of events all around the state, meeting with all the chamber groups, meeting with all the labor groups, uh, looking them in the eye and telling them why this is the best option out there. And if you have another option that's credible and the numbers add up, speak now or forever hold your peace. Would I do a town meeting in West Haven? Yeah, that's where a lot of the toll gantries are trying to go. Yeah, why not? I'll tell you what it means to West Haven. I'll tell you how it uh, speeds up transportation there. I'll tell you what um, Sikorsky or Tweed means to opening up economic opportunity in the central part of the state where it's been stagnant for 40 years. I'm happy to make that case. Well, 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 you know, just not West Haven because there's, there's, what, there's what parks there, there's water guards. Will you, will your itinerary include the 14 communities or however many communities are divided amongst the, the tolls? In this, in this schedule, because these are the people that arguably will be most directly affected. Well, I go to every one. Um, let me get back to you on that. But uh, I'm going to be looking people in the eye, uh, not just business and labor, not just legislators, not just folks in this ecosystem here, and telling them why I think this is important. In people fact, have plenty of opportunity to tell me what they think. I ask because in, in Greater Waterbury, you're going to have a toll on the, on the McMaster. You're going to have a toll on the Rochambeau uh, Bridge, um, the South Ferry and Newtown line, and you're also planning on putting tolls for uh, repairing, connected with repairs of, of four bid bridges south of the McMaster uh, interchange on, on Route 8. So, you know, it would seem to be, you know, somebody, you know, a, a, a community like Waterbury. I'll be down there. I'll be talking to people. I really appreciate the fact that the Waterbury Republican American, not Every day do they step up and say, I think this makes a fair amount of sense. But uh, obviously it wouldn't be practical because there's 14 of them, but how about in the Senate district where people are on the fence on voting for this? Do you think there's yeah. four or five of them? I'll, I'll tell you what, let, give us a little bit of time to come up with a schedule well, about what our priorities are. But, but to your bigger question, am I ready to go out there, look people in the eye, and why I think this is the most important investment we can make as a state? Am I ready to go out there, look people in the eye, and say, I've got a responsible way to pay for it? Am I ready to say, I think I've got strong support from labor and strong support from business? They know this is key to a reset for the state of Connecticut, what it takes to get us going again. I'll take that message anywhere I can. Last tomorrow, question. Tomorrow, what do you say to any Senate Democrat when you're in the caucus who <coughs> says we're alarmed at some of the municipal election results last Tuesday and what it means about tolls? Well, obviously, the municipal elections were a whole variety of things, and I think, um, I think the Democrats did pretty well in that. Um, but more importantly, I don't think this is an issue you want to linger. It's lingered for the last 20 years. Do you really want this hanging over your head for the next year, for the next three years? You know, if it's a problem we don't solve, you still have a special transportation fund that's going under. You still have a bridge that has to be repaired. And people are going to say, Lamont had a plan to fix it. Uh, what are you going to do? I think uh, we're going to turn that corner, put this in the rearview mirror, and people are going to know this is how you get this state moving again. Hey, thanks, everybody. Thank you.